Judas lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah, commander in chief of all armies. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the king of glory. You are Yahweh Sabah. You are the God who has never lost the fight. Come and reign in our service this morning. Come and reign in our lives. Come and reign in our nations. Come and reign in every area of our lives. Be thou exalted. You have been given the name that is above every other name. At the mention of your name, every knee would bow of the things in the heavens, the things in the earth, and the things under the earth. And every tongue, likewise, will confess that you are Lord. Be thou exalted. Thank you for the privilege of sitting together with you in the high places, far above principalities, and powers. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Praise God. Just want to appreciate our dear sister for leading us in that wonderful time of worship. And I'd like to welcome all of us to our broadcast this morning or this evening, this afternoon, depending on your time zone. It's the beginning of British summertime, where I am. 
it's such a privilege to always share the word of God with God's people from wherever they are. So thank you for giving me this opportunity to just share with you. Today also is we celebrate what is referred to as Palm Sunday in our Christian calendar, the beginning of Holy Week, as some will call it. And uh, as we reflect upon the significance of this day, uh, the Lord laid it in my heart to invite us to ask ourselves a question which, in my opinion, the first century Jewish believers should have asked themselves or they failed to ask themselves on this day over 2,021 years ago. And that question is, what is Jesus up to? What is Jesus up to? Some of you may remember from the early 1990s all throughout the new millennium, a generation of Christians asked itself the golden question, what will Jesus do? Many of us who are a little bit older remember the WWD movement. And post the millennium or into the millennium, it, the what will do, what would Jesus do question was then refined to different variations. One of them was, what is Jesus doing rather than what would Jesus do? As profound, as significant as all those questions were for their time, I believe the challenge for our generation, particularly at the dawn of the new decade last year, which came with, with all its challenges and crises, I believe the challenge of our generation is not necessarily what would Jesus do or what is Jesus doing, but it's more about what is Jesus up to? What is he up to today? And like I said at the beginning, this is the question that the first Jewish believers failed to ask themselves on that first Palm Sunday. I take it for granted that many of you are Bible students, so you're familiar with the Palm Sunday text, Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. But for the sake of those who are not, this story, this incident, is recorded in all the four Gospels, and that says a lot. It was a real event which occurred, and all the eyewitnesses did not miss it. Hence, is found in all the four Gospels. So just for the sake of those who are not familiar with it, I know most of you are, I just want to pick it up from Luke 19, 35 to 44. Luke 19, 35 to 44. Then they brought a donkey to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on it, and they set Jesus on it. And as Jesus went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen Jesus do, saying, Blessed is the King, blessed is the King who comes in the name. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. The gospel of John even adds, they also shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And whilst they were doing that, verse 39, some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd and said, Teacher, come on, we book your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent. The very stones will immediately cry out. Now as Jesus drew near, he saw the city of Jerusalem and wept over it, saying, Oh Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, if only you had known, 
even you, especially in this your day, the things that shall make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the brevity of time, let me jump to verse 44. And he then says, because you did not know the time of your visitation. I pray that we will know the time of our own visitation. You did not know the time of your visitation. Then after that, Jesus went straight into the temple. He began to drive out those who bought and sold in it, saying to them, it is written, my house is a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of thieves. And he was teaching daily in the temple. The chief priests, the Pharisees, the scribes, the leaders of the people sought to kill him, but they were unable to do anything at that time for all the people were very attentive to hear him. I pray that you did not. He said, because you did not know the time of your visitation. In that first century, Palm Sunday, it was a glorious day. However, many believers missed the Lord's mission. They missed why Jesus was coming triumphantly into Jerusalem. Now, the first group of people whom we know, that one is obvious, were the Pharisees. We know the Pharisees did. They missed Jesus. They missed him all the time. They certainly missed him here. Now, bear in mind, Pharisees were not just guys who did not know what they were doing. These were teachers of the law. By the law, we're talking about the law of Moses, the Old Testament. They lived, they did nothing else apart from ministering in the temple. Most of what they did was to consume themselves in the Old Testament, studying the word day and night, meditating upon it. Someone said they sometimes they used to even play games. The kind of games they used to play was about scriptures. So they knew the scriptures. So the Pharisees, they, 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 they were familiar with all the messianic prophecies concerning the Messiah. They knew about Zechariah 9 verse 9 and many others. But watch this. They refused to believe. They refused to admit that all those prophecies, all those messianic prophecies were being fulfilled in their very eyes through this young 30-year-old man from Nazareth. They chose to refuse to believe it. If anyone could believe it, it was them because they had the evidence that all those prophecies were being fulfilled through him. So because of that, they missed it. They, to them, everything that Jesus did was either coincidental, every miracle he did was either deceptive or blasphemy. That's why as Jesus entered and the people worshipped and shouted, Hosanna, they cried out, teacher, this is blasphemy. Tell your disciples to keep quiet. And Jesus said, no. If they keep quiet, even the stones will cry out. Jesus was showing them that he was worthy of being worshipped. He had been given a name that is above every other name. And the mention of his name. Not only will every knee bow of the things in the heavens, the earth, under the earth, but every time will confess him as Lord. That means he was worthy of worship. They were so consumed afterwards of plotting to get rid of Jesus than see the bigger picture of why Jesus was coming. They failed to ask themselves, what was Jesus up to? They took it that Jesus was coming to condemn them, to be their enemy, not knowing that he was just coming to save them. So the Pharisees missed it. It's an obvious case. The second group of people who missed it, ah, was the multitudes, the crowd that followed Jesus. The crowd who threw their clothes, the branches, and raised their palms on that 2,000 years ago, 2,021 years ago, Palm Sunday, and say, Hosanna be the highest. They also missed it. Because within a matter of weeks, some scholars even say less than that, Within a matter of weeks, we hear that there are hosannas now changed to crucify him. John 6 verse 15, 
John 6 verse 15 tells us that one moment, one moment they were ready to enthrone him as king. After he fed the 5,000, Jesus perceived from their eyes that they, were, they wanted to make him king to the point that Jesus had to run away because he knew he couldn't stop them. They were so convinced that this has got to be the, prophet, the, the promised Messiah. One minute they were ready to enthrone him as king. The next minute, they labeled him thief. So the crowd that followed him missed it, which reminds me of a message I shared back one time. Don't follow the crowd, follow God's cloud. Because the majority can soon turn. However, there's another group of people who missed it, who failed to ask themselves, what was Jesus up to? And this group of people were his own disciples. To make matters worse. His own disciples. Now, of all the people, his disciples had no excuse. Because Jesus gave them the heads up. Luke 18 verse 31 to 35. Luke 18 verse 31 to 35 tells us that Jesus took time. Prior to this, he took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, guys, we are going to Jerusalem in a few days. And all the things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man will be accomplished. For he will be delivered to the Gentiles. He will be mocked, insulted, and spit upon. And they will scourge him, kill him, and on the third day he will rise. Bear in mind, Jesus just told them this probably a week before. Taking time to prepare them. But the scripture tells us in verse 34, That they understood none of these things. This saying was also hidden from them. And they did not know the things which he spoke about. So when Jesus triumphantly entered Jerusalem. Not even his own disciples could discern why he was coming. I I bet their adrenaline rush got in the way. Finally, they could see their rabbi, Jesus being praised, being exalted. Finally, maybe they too will be recognized as his inner circle and all their labor of love and their sacrifice of following Jesus was now going to pay off. I bet straight after that as Jesus went straight into the temple and began to overturn tables, whoo, They felt like, yes, our master is here. He's shaking up things. Bear in mind, this was not just an ordinary temple. This was a temple in Jerusalem. The holy city. The holiest temple. To this day, Israel is still regarded as the holy land. Let alone the place where the temple of David was. was The most sacred place on earth. I mean, if you can shake up religious activities there, you probably can shake up religious activities anywhere else in the world. So, Jesus was in his element. The disciples loved it. They thought, yes, the kingdom of God has come. We are going to take over. The the, 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 the son of David, the rightful heir, he was going to come. And he was coming to take over his throne. But not long after that, Judas betrays him. Peter denies him. The rest of his disciples, except for one, abandons him at the cross. All frustrated, all confused. Scriptures tell us that some of them even wanted to just go back to what they used to do about two to three years ago before they met Jesus. It was like, it's just one of those things. They were all frustrated. How can this powerful messianic king die such a humiliating death. So they missed it because they failed to ask themselves or ask the Lord, Lord, what are you up to? What is your mission? However, there was a few people, just one or two, few people who did not miss it or who at least caught a glimpse of Jesus' mission over 2,021 years ago. One of those was a fellow named Pilate. 
as they brought Jesus to Pilate, Pilate looked at him and said, look, and I'm paraphrasing, I've, I've judged a lot of people, but I find no fault in this man. He washed his head. He saw a glimpse of what his own disciples could not see, what the teachers of the law could not see. Another fellow who did not miss it was one of the thieves on the cross as Jesus was being crucified. As he looked at Jesus and looked at everything, even though he was a well-known thief, ultimately, suddenly he started to discern. He probably said, look, I, I know a thief when I see one. I'm a thief. They say game recognizes game. This man, it's not a thief. This man is everything that he said he is. Another fellow who did not miss it was the Roman centurion who after he got involved in crucifying him and witnessed the cataclysmic events that followed the crucifixion of Christ he, the Bible says, and he was a pagan. The Bible says he bowed down, I believe. Some, some scholars say he even took off his head and said, I've crucified a lot of people. I've crucified many. But this man was truly the son of God. And ultimately we know that Judas will also cry out, I betrayed an innocent Jesus prayed, I pray that you will not miss the hour of your visitation. But many missed it, apart from a minority few. I pray that you and I will not miss it. Just as the thief on the cross did it. Just as Pilate did it. And I hope that we will not be too late to recognize it. Like Judas and the centurion was. Why did they miss it? The first century Jewish believers missed it because... They became presumptuous about the Lord's mission. None of them took time to inquire from him, from the Lord himself. Lord, what are you up to? The scriptures tell us when he shared these things with his disciples, they did not understand it. But none of them asked Jesus, Master, we don't understand. No. We know you speak with people, with, with, the, with other people in parables. But when you speak to us, you speak to us in plain language. Please explain to us. What are you saying? None of them. They just went ahead of the Lord. They just ran ahead of the Lord. And they missed it. Now, almost 2,021 years later, we too run the same risk of missing the Lord's mission for our time if we don't take time to inquire for me and ask him, Jesus, what are you up to today? One thing I like about the Lord, in fact, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself said it. He said, if you ask him for a fish, he will not give you a snake. If you ask him for bread, he will not give you a stone. He will answer you if you inquire for me. If you genuinely ask Proverbs 19 verse 21 says, Many are the plans in a man's heart, but only the Lord's counsel will stand. I like it in the NLT version, which says, You can make your plans. Go ahead, make your plans. As long as you know that it's the Lord's purpose that will ultimately prevail. So if you want your plans to succeed, it's best to align them to God's plans and ask, Lord, what is your plan for my life? What are you up to? Who? As I close, because our time is nearly far spent, uh, it's a well-known fact. It's not unheard of. The present global pandemic caught all of us by surprise. Politicians, scientists, health professionals, leaders, priests, preachers, and prophets alike, it caught all of us by surprise. And I'm not saying this disrespect to dis disrespect anyone's ministry. Most of the prophecies that I had 
concerning the coronavirus came after the coronavirus. The ones that came prior that were either vague or were late. And this is not to disrespect anyone. This is to show the sovereignty of our God. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29 says, The secret things belong to the Lord. The things which are revealed belong to his sons. That means we, we, we know in part. And God can choose to show us what he chooses to show us. But he's still God. He will always surprise us. So we all learn, preachers, or anybody, prophets, that we need to inquire from him first. But if you do, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 promises us that I has not seen, ear has said, neither has he entered into the heart of a man, the things which the Lord has prepared for us, but he's able to reveal them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, the deep things of God. So on this Palm Sunday, I want you to ask yourself, what is Jesus up to in your nation? What is he up to with this pandemic? Because Jesus is there. He's there in the ICU. He's there. He's there in the government. He's there in the parliament. But let's not miss what he's doing. What are you up to, Lord? And maybe in your own life as well. In your own marriage. In your own job. The challenges that you may be going through. Don't just run ahead of the Lord. Father, what are you up to? What are you doing with all this? What is your plan? And as you do that, God will bless you. And if you are here and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, what the best time it is for you to surrender into the Lord. It's, be- it's good in any day, but what a wonderful time it would be for you to surrender to Jesus on a holy week. He said he came not to condemn. The Pharisees thought he came to condemn, but he came not to condemn, but to save you. If you are ready to accept Jesus, pray, acknowledge him, believe in your heart. Confess him as your Lord and Savior. Ask him to fill you with, your, with his Holy Spirit and help you to walk in this path of righteousness. And write your name in the book of life. May God wish you bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll be having another service on Good Friday. The links will be sent to you. Until then, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forever. Amen and amen. Happy Palm Sunday.